the power hours. <laughs> All righty, we're, we're good to go. Yep. Okay. Well, welcome everyone uh, to our special Native Wellness Power Hour today. Um, we want to welcome you and we want to welcome you to share it so others can join us. We're doing um, this special Power Hour today on uh, honoring and remembering, um, bring, you know, telling our truth around reconciliation and healing for the boarding school and residential um, experience. And so um, my name is Jolene Joseph and I am a member of the White Clay People from Fort Belknap, Montana. I am also the executive director of the Native Wellness Institute. And way back in March, 2020, um, when the pandemic was first hitting, we got together as a board and on March 21st, it was a Saturday, we started these Native Wellness Power Hours. They're just, we started going seven days a week at the beginning. And this is just our contribution to the pandemic. We knew that people would um, be challenged during this pandemic time, um, re-triggered and re-traumatized. And we wanted to be, you know, um, some consistency and predictability around um, trauma response. And we wanted to be here every day for you. And then because we're only human, we needed to take a break over the summer as well. So we cut back to one day a week and we've been doing our Wellness Wednesdays Power Hour. And today, because it's Thursday, September 30th is, you know, orange shirt day um, around the truth and reconciliation and healing and remembering of the residential and school board um, experience, we wanted to do our special power hour today. So thank you for being here. Um, we Before we get started, uh, we wanna just start off in a good way. And we wanna send prayers to each of you that are tuning in today. We want to send out prayers and acknowledgement to all of our ancestors who are no longer physically here on this earth, but who continue to guide us and support us and love us. And I just want to ask my sister Theda just to open us up in a good way with a, with a prayer before we start. Thank you, Jolene. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Levina. And um, thank you for everyone that believes in the teachings of our ancestors and NWI. So Ohio Stipatipi. I own Nina, how not be not to see. We're just so grateful, Creator, that you have um, spared our lives, spared our our ancestors' lives, so that we could live. How's to bad to be? I'll nina, I'll not be not to see. EPC Watts, Morning Star, Evening Star, Kakadoksi go on, all of the star people all of our universe, all of our succumb, our earth, all of our plants, all of our water, all of our families. Creator, we just, um, we stand and we sit before you and we just really want to thank you for giving us today to remember, for giving us today to recollect everything that has gone on since contact creator we just ask you to to come come with us to pity us no pity us as we do our best to help our own healing our family's healing our tribe's healing our nation's healing our global healing we just ask special prayers for all those children that their bodies were found and that they're helping us all find the truth so we can reconcile what has gone on. We thank all of the countries like Australia that have publicly apologized. We ask all of the countries that have apologized and put money to it and put services for so our people can heal. We just ask that you help us as we hear apologies and as we hear the truth that we can move forward in a, a good way of our own self-care, of our children's self-care, 
of our precious grandchildren's self-care, of our earth's self-care, and that we can move forward in a reconciliation that has never been seen before. Or people of all color, people of all religions, people of all make can come together and truly have kindness and goodness to each other. We can reach our hand halfway across the table. We just ask special prayers for our elected leaders, for our traditional leaders, who ask special prayers for those that are suffering right now that have COVID-19. We ask special prayers for those who don't have any vaccination. We just ask that you spare them, that they still get to have life. We just ask you to come with us today. Our tears are healing. Creator, thank you for helping us to learn to trust, to feel, and to talk. And thank you for this time. We humbly ask you as an NWI team just to provide a space, a safe space where we can all heal together. Anya, thank you. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Theta. Thank you for those, for that beautiful prayer. And again, we want to welcome everyone to our special uh, power hour today. And um, I'm just honored to be here with my sisters and my brother. And um, I think we're all a little tenderhearted because we feel it too. You know, it has impacted our lives um, as well. The, the boarding school and residential experience. And, you know, today is called Orange Shirt Day. And we just want to give a shout out to Phyllis Webstad, um, a, a First Nation woman from British Columbia who back in the 70s when she went to residential school her grandmother bought her a brand new orange shirt and when she got there um, it was taken away from her and it was never given back and so she started a movement and um, chose the color orange because of because of that experience and because of her memories. And so it's okay if you don't have an orange shirt, like I, I'm not wearing an orange shirt today because one of the things that has happened because of capitalism is big corporations are buying up all these orange shirts, non-native people on um, businesses are selling these, you know, every child matters orange shirts. And so many of our people can't get the orange shirt. So it's okay if you don't have an orange shirt. I have, I'm wearing my earrings. I have orange beads on them instead. <laughs> so it's okay if you don't have an orange shirt. And thank you so much to Phyllis for starting this movement. Um, we're contributing to that movement today by, by bringing healing to our people. And I was sharing with my, um, my colleagues earlier you know, I looked up the word reconciliation um, and the two definitions um, were the restoration of friendly relations and the action of making one view or belief compatible with another. And really what today is about uh, for me is like reconciliation with ourselves. That's, that's who we have power and control over is reconciliation reconciliation with ourselves, having friendly relations with ourselves, friendly enough to want healing for, for ourselves. And we're going to, we're going to talk about that today. Um, but the first kind of question and, and Jean is going to go first and you can introduce yourself then to Jean. And I know we've been doing this for like a year and a half where we're, this is like our week 79 of our power hours. We've done over 350 of them. Um, so I just want to start out by, you know, we look at a day of honor, reconciliation, truth, and healing. What does that mean to you, Gene? Um, hey, it's good to be here, everybody. My name is Gene Tagaban. My Tlingit name is Gayao. I'm of the Duck Dane Tong clan, the Raven Freshwater Sockeye clan from Huna, Alaska, child of a Wishkata and Eagle Shark clan from Ahuan and Juneau, Alaska. Um, on my mama's side, she's full blood Cherokee, and her Cherokee name is Weak. And she was born in Jay, Oklahoma, raised in Zena, and before the Trail of Tears, it um, she um, 
traced our lineage back to a place that is now called Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina. Um, you know, and as I, you know, and also I'm part Filipino too, because our, our, my Filipino half, we, we also felt the, uh, um, the, the genocide, uh, the, the, the school, the simulation, and everything as well. Um, but on this day, when you ask that question of, of honoring and of remembering and, you know, and um, reconciliation, I just can't help but think about like all those ancestors, those aunties, uncles, cousins, relatives I would still have if they did survive. How many more I would have? Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'm, um, I feel I'm, I'm really emotional just talking about this, you know, and as a man, you know, talking about this as a male and, and a man who can shed these tears too. And, and, and these tears are tears of, of sure, there's, there's a deep hurt that's in there, but these tears are tears of honoring. These tears are tear of, 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 of reverence, of reverence. You know, for for them, because you know what they dreamt me, dreamt us into existence. We've been dreamt into existence, you know, and so part of it too is like just re that remembering that reverence, you know, and that what that's part of you know you talked about the healing for myself, what I can do, and part of that too is like as um, I remember them and remember those relatives and knowing that you know I don't know your name, I don't know you know, but. You know, I, I remember you and thank you for your existence. And thank you for dreaming me into existence. And even though those children who um, their dreams weren't fulfilled, I'll tell you what, when I get down a little bit, I get sad, you know, I have anxiety, whatever it is, I still remember that I, I'm here to dream for them. I'm here to dream for them. My dreams are their dreams. As I'm here with, with my, my relatives right here, that, that we, what we're doing here is we're dreaming the future generations into existence. And so that, that, that will continue on. And that's part of, of that, that honoring, that honoring that, that I, for myself, um, do that remembrance, you know, and that re reconciliation of, you know, of, of that. And so that's that's a little bit of um, you know, and I'm still trying. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm still working it out, and I'm still learning about it. I'm still learning about that, you know. And so that's a um, yeah. I'm gonna pass it on uh, to uh, yeah to Theta. Yeah. Thank thank you, Jane. I love that. I am continuing their dreams. I love that. Theta, how about you? A day of honor, remembrance, reconciliation, truth, and healing. What does that mean to you? Part of what it means is um, that we're clean and sober. <laughs> I don't think any of the self-reconciliation can happen with the individual or the family unless there's some clarity. And I think part of the clarity comes more when we reclaim and it's, it's reclaiming our language beyond just saying the colors and the numbers but the 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 deeper the deeper words that um are quantum physics words that talk about the belief in the universe <laughs> the belief in um the energy that our ancestors are physically gone but they're they're right here they're right here and they're right here i think it's reclaiming um our rites of passage and naming every indigenous person and every tribal person at birth, giving them an Indian name, or if they don't have one at 50, giving them an Indian name. I think it's um, reclaiming the beautiful things in our life, like um, falling in love and courtship um, of having your um, older brothers and sisters and cousins guide you that it isn't a secret love or relationship that it's out in the community and the community helps you 
pick a good partner and helps you when you have children. It's reclaiming all of the, the birthrights that are, of our ancestors. I think um, part of the reconciliation in self is just to respect self, to self-care, to um, eat good things, you know, to eat the salmon, to eat the, the wild meat, to, to pick the strawberries, to, to pick the um, savas berries. I think it's about reclaiming our ceremonies and not worrying if it's right or wrong. It just drop to your knees and ask your creator for help. I think it's um, reclaiming um, drinkable water. <laughs> you know, it, it just, it's reclaim, you know, 3% of the, the water on earth is drinkable, just reclaiming. It's um, really loving our earth and believing in climate change. It's it's blind, it's buying a goddamn electric truck, you know. <laughs> it's 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 getting a hybrid. It's it's using solar power. It's it's using wind power. It's like all of those reconciliations that, yeah, we were hurt, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm vulnerable right now. I'm vulnerable with you, Jolene, with you, Jean, with you, Levina. You know, all of what you're doing, Levina, with our missing and murdered, I'm vulnerable, but I can talk through these tapes. I can get my clarity because reclaiming ourselves is that we don't hide in silence. Reclaiming ourselves is that we don't retreat or victim. We come out as a warrior. We come out as victorious. And, and I think that's what today is about. And we want to ask all of you that are with us right now, just to love yourself, love your family, love your animals, love the earth. Just, just, just continue loving and put action to it. Do things for people that they don't know about. Be kind. Go out and help others. When we're hurting, the best thing to go out is to go out and, at, and help others. So I think some of that, um, Jolene, is just, just from an instinctual gut level, I'm just sharing that part with you. Awesome. Thank you, Theta. And I want to welcome Lavina, who's all the way on the East Coast, um, and she'll share a little bit about what she's doing. But Lavina, this day of honor and remembrance and reconciliation, truth and healing, what, what does today mean to you? Hi, everybody. I'm standing in the in Washington, D.C. And as you guys can see, you can see the the state capitals behind me and the Washington monuments in front of me. And I'm standing in the place where it all started. I'm standing in the place where they made the laws that, that created the boarding schools that said to kill the Indian and save the child. To kill everything within us so that we could no longer be ourselves. And to be standing here I took off my shoes and my socks so I could feel Mother Earth, so that I, I could bring forgiveness from our families, from the, the elders who survived those boarding schools to the children who never got to come home and hug their mothers ever again. Everything in my life I do for these children that didn't get to go home, that didn't get to hug their moms, their dads, that were buried in those boarding schools. Tonight that we're going to have people gather and we're going to walk in remembrance of those children. You know, and, and I got my shirt and, and Aaron Allen, he was, he's a tribal, he's a tribal member who made the shirts that we're wearing. 
you know, it's about forgiving and supporting and bringing awareness to what happened to our people. And, and the whole world needs to know. And I love the fact that Native Wellness Institute is about healing. Theta's prayer, Jean's songs, everything that Jaleen does from the time she wakes up to the time she goes to bed is about healing. It's to help our people to be able to heal from this hurt and pain, to be able to stand in Washington, D.C. and say, all his thoughts that we are still here, that we can still speak our languages. To that, today is about that, it's about we shall remain, that we're still here and we will continue to say prayers for the next seven generations to come. That's what it means to me. Awesome. Thank you, Levina. And I hope the people that can hear you back there are having, a, are having their ears open to, to take in what you're saying. Thank you so much. So, you know, one of the reasons why the Native Wellness Institute exists is because of the lasting impacts of historical and intergenerational trauma, of which residential and boarding schools is one, you know, piece of that. And one of the things that we try to help people do is connect the dots between trauma and behavior. And so when we hear things like, um, geez, that happened 500 years ago, just get over it already, <laughs> that, that we can help people understand like what, what that even means, right? And so um, Jean, we'll start with you on, the, on this question. How does the boarding and residential school experience still impact our people today? Big question, I know. <laughs> um, gosh, I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna go out, you know. My and my family, my father, his um, his health is pretty fragile, and and uh, and as he's getting older, I'm starting to explore more and and take a look at my own family, and my grandmother, his mother um as a survivor of the boarding school and through the years you know she they told her that she was less than she was dumb um you know and she was incapable and she didn't teach, teach us the culture until later on when she finally she got her high school degree in like in her 60s and then she realized that she wasn't dumb or or incapable but she was intelligent you know, here's a woman, my grandmother, who um, ran her own business, helped the community, fed the community, you know, and supported the community in so many ways. And I say that <coughs> about my grandmother in that way, but there's another part of that my father um, and my grandmother being really just there was something in them that where it was just, um, there was a deep pain, there's a deep hurt. And I take a look at my, uh, you know, why was my grandmother like that? Why was my grandmother can be really just mean sometimes or, or uh, hurtful? And my father who uh, many times couldn't show compassion or empathy, you know, and and uh, how, why did his brain work? Why did he think the way he thought? Or how, why did he do what he did? You know, and I, um, and I think about that and I look back and I just say, you know, it was, it was a, in our family with my grandmother being a, a boarding school survivor about the effects of, of, of that in, in her life. And how it was passed on to, I see it in, in other parts of my family, other aunties, other uncles. And, um, and then I, I go back further than that, and I can't help but ask it, but ask within my own family, what's the story here? What happened? 
why was so and so like this? Why was so and so like that? You know, and 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 I just can't help but just start to explore that. Um, you know, and the impacts of the boarding schools on our uh, the the diseases, the heart diseases, the diabetes, the alcohol, and the drugs. You know, the addictions, and um, and just I see in Indian country and uh, the abuses, the violence, the sexual abuses that have been passed on, you know, and, and I see the effects uh, just of the boarding schools on our people in that way, and in that way, you know, and so it's, um, you know, sure, it's like, sure, globally, community, societal, you know, and all that, but I, it's oftentimes I just take a look at the effects in my own family, mm-hmm. and then I see, how does that affect me? How does that, how has that affected me and my thinking? And I take a look when I was younger, how I was, you know, and as I grow and, you know, I've been part of the NWI, you know, about thank goodness of when we're just focused on healing because I can't focus on other people's healing unless I start focusing on my own, mm-hmm. do my own homework, you know, and, and I'm constantly taking a look at that, how it affects my, my life, my relationships, my relationship with my wife. You know, and myself. And I take a look at back, you know, it's like the effects of the boarding school, the genocides. You know, and you know, it's it's pretty awesome that 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 the virus there on that land there and you know, and, and that's 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 awesome. Taking off her shoes. Taking off our sh- her shoes, you know feeling it so that her ancestors the, the, the land itself because the land remembers mm-hmm. the land is like here you are here you are here you are and so part part of that too is like that the effects of the boarding school is like you know we're wearing shoes we're not feeling the land anymore we're not feeling the earth we're 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 you know, the call, this colonization of, of just, you know, it, it's raining here in, in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, it's raining hard here. And I see people is like shying away from the rain, like scared of the rain, you know, and it's an ancestral rain, you know, and that's just, again, that's just a little bit. I mean, there's so much more the effects of it that I can, I can speak on and, you know, but I just kind of like lately just been really taking a look at that, like me, how is it affecting me, my mm-hmm. life and my own family in my own Thanks. family so I'm yeah. gonna pass it over. awesome thank you jean theta would you like to go next how does the boarding and residential school experience still impact our people today you know when you ask that question um it's kind of like they say how do you eat a buffalo one bite at a time <laughs> You know, so I, Gene, Gene, you know, of course answered it and I just love how he frames things and I know Levina can and you can, but I think what we also have to, how it affects us, Jolene, is it's, it's like a soul wound, mm. you know, we focus on the mind, body and spirit, but it has something to do with the soul. It's like a soul wound that we got to rip the scab off or, you know, um, for those people who have frozen feelings or they deny that it happens. I, I work with women and men, but I work with women who can't remember their sexual abuse that started in boarding schools and residential schools with altar boys and and girls that wanted to be nuns and then just kept going down the pattern so this soul wound some of the effects of a soul wound is um diabetes you know we didn't have tribes didn't have no diabetes till 1936 we had no diabetes and then we're given you know white sugar white bread or we're starved to death we have to rely upon um, white th- foods or processed foods. And so this, the soul wound is, is much deeper. It's, it's poverty. It's when you're in poverty and you think they say there's a, 
you know, there's a highway that takes you to poverty, but there's just a small sidewalk that leads you out. And part of that soul wound is, you know, prosperity for all, equal jobs. Um, part of that soul wound is our relatives who embezzle that, that false entitlement where they think they can just take when actually it should be distributed. Our chiefs, our chiefs and our, our queens and our divas and divos, whatever they had was spread out to the people. Whatever you had was given out. And so that, that um, to answer some of that question is, so we have to um, do some reconciliation and, and Levina alluded to it. You know, she said, we shall remain with the forgiveness. We shall remain with the reconciliation. We, you know, um, bring back our forgiveness ceremonies. You know, one of the beautiful things, I guess, and that I seen this summer is all the ceremonies while we could temporarily gather again, you know, without the Delta, is I seen our Ocon, our medicine lodge, and 500 people show up, and half of them lived off the res. They came home to get their Indian name. They came home to learn so that their soul wasn't wounded anymore because your soul is still wounded when oh i can't do it right or there's a right or wrong way that's that kind of colonization but when you just show up and you you just show your vulnerability and you just say help help me i want to learn and then then the wise elders and the 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 ceremonial people just embrace you give you a blanket, wrap you up and bring you in, give you your Indian name and get and bring you into the ceremony. So I think Jelaine, it's part of it's, um, is to mend our, to mend the soul. And so, you, you know, the soul is kind of an interesting thing to mend because you know, it's, you're mending it when you sleep good, you know, you're mending it when no matter how, what challenges you have, you wake up and you say, good morning. You know, what a good day that I'm alive. What an awesome, you know, you know, so I think that it's, it's about our soul. And I guess I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. You know, I want to um, hear some of what Levina has to say, you know, can I add on to that? Can I add on to that too? Real, just real quick, you know, and, and I love this, you know, theater, you know, that soul wound too. And it reminds me, I, I heard somebody speaking about this, you know, when um, somebody loses a limb, they have that phantom pain, mm -hmm. as if the limb is still there. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. That's what it reminds me of, that soul wound. But it's like that, that there's that a limb has been disconnected, but still we feel like it's there, but where is it? We still feel that pain. We still feel that hurt that's there. The presence of it, but where is it? Yeah. You know, and so, yeah. Yeah, that's a great example. Thank you. Thank you both. So Lavina, how do you see the boarding and residential school experience still impacting our people today? So I think for me, like, you know, one of the reasons why I'm in Washington, D.C. is because my husband went on a, a journey for murdered and missing Indigenous women. And that's a direct result from boarding schools. Because in those boarding schools, our families learned how to hurt each other, learned how to hit each other, learned how to yell and, and beat each other. That came from boarding schools, just like how Jean said, the sexual abuse, the physical abuse, rape. Our people were raped in boarding schools, whether it was, you know, the missionary boarding schools, the, there were so many different boarding schools. Every state across the nation has boarding schools. And so, so then from those boarding schools, when, when the people left them schools, they drank, they drank alcohol to, to stop the pain, to try to forget. But, they, but it's also, they learned how to abuse. And so then, then that's why they abuse their own children and their own, you know, uncles abuse their nieces and nephews and cousins abused each other. And, you know, 
I mean, we were sexually abused by our own families because that was learned in those boarding schools. And so many people took that pain and, and they, they learned it and they repeated it. So that's why we have so much suicide. And like, like Theta talked about, you know, alcohol is sugar. We have diabetes and heart disease and obesity, health disparities, alcohol related car wrecks. All of that is from those boarding schools. That's where the love in our families was broken. The love in our families was broken. And now we have to try to amend it. Every time I call my dad, I tell him, I love you, dad. Because it's hard for him to say, I love you. And I noticed like recently, he says it more often when I call, he says, I love you too. Mm -hmm. And that's a result of boarding schools that our families can't say, I love you. But we're hearing it more. We're hearing it more. We're making a difference. And, and I think, you know, I don't know how many times a day my, my children will hug me and say, I love you, mom. I love you, mom. Mm -hmm. And it makes my heart so happy because love is healing. And we just have to love each other. We just have to stop tearing each other down. We have to, you know, the lateral oppression and the lateral violence, it needs to stop now. And we can do that through loving each other. And all the love that I feel from all of you, from you guys, from Native Wellness, I feel that in my soul. And that's healing. And it's beautiful. And so to me, you know, it, it's the love. We got to bring back the love. Awesome. Thank you, Lavina. Thank you all for sharing. Uh, we have about 20 minutes left and we, we knew that this hour would go by so fast and there's so much to include in this topic. Um, so we always say at the Native Wellness Institute that, you know, where there has been trauma, healing is the answer. And so we want to spend this last segment, you know, talking about, talking about that, talking about healing. And, you know, one of the reasons why I'm here today is, you know, to honor my mom and all of her siblings, there was nine of them, um, who all went to boarding school. And they also talked about the good things that happened at boarding school and the good memories that they have from boarding school. And there's always a flip side to everything, right? There's always a flip side to everything. Um, the flip side to sorrow is joy. You know, the flip side to trauma is healing. And that's what we want to talk about um, next. So Jean, I'll start with you again. So we know that healing is the answer to trauma. What suggestion, suggestions can you give our listeners today um, who might be either starting or, you know, thinking about starting their healing journey or who are well on their healing journey? What are, what are some things that people can do to start or nurture their own healing journey? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, um, um, you know, there's, there's that, that love, but part of my, you know, I was talking to my mom, you know, and ask, find those stories, ask, what's the story? What's, what's going on here? What's going on with the family? You know, and my mom, um, My mom's a rock star. I'm just going to just say that. My mom's a rock star. And she's like, she's, she's just a badass warrior in so many ways. And that, you know, in her, her story, she went to boarding school when she was six years old. And they came and got her in Oklahoma. And she got sick. She got really sick. And just, you know, they, they didn't think she was going to make it. She got pneumonia. And then uh, she, her grandma, who said she was taking care of her, sent the uncles to go get her, you go get my granddaughter. And they took her home and, and my grandmother healed her up. You know, she was a healer and my mom's a nurse, you know, and from that. But um, my mom was saying that, that she sees how so many of these young ones, the little ones 
they became sick because of their heartbreak, their um, their soul wound, you know, of uh, and how they got, they they died there and stuff. So part of my mom's thing was like that was that that um, she was, she was like going no my family. The healing starts here. My family, my children, are not going to go through that. They're not going to experience that. And she loved us. You know, it's like, you know, find that love, you know, and, and I don't have to look far. I just looked at my mom and she just planted. It's like she took that and she just planted it inside our, our hearts, inside our souls. You know, and we we know we know that, um, um, and I know that, you know, and and even though my father is was pretty hard at times, but my I mean my my father I mean, yeah, I can show that love, but I mean, so that's that that part of that healing is is that I mean as we we're talking about here is like that love that, but sometimes it's like we we can't you know we say love ourselves, but that sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Just to love ourselves, but love is out there waiting for you. The trees love you. <laughs> Take your shoes off. The land loves you. The water that you drink loves you. The sunshine that shines on your face in the morning or the evening loves you. The wind, the wind that blows in the trees loves you. The gentle waves and the music of the birds mm -hmm. loves you. And just the very, your very breath and that, that, that quantum love, that, that spiritual love is out there. And that love, it just, it loves you. And you may, so if you have hard, a hard time finding that love within yourself, that love for yourself, just know that externally out there that find the love everywhere else. In the supermarkets, when you see a little child and a mama holding the baby, find the love, look for that love. No, we have dogs, man. We have dogs. No, our dogs are love. You know, just pure love. You know, and so there's there's searching for that love, and that, and in searching for the love, you cannot help but start taking a look and finding the love that's deep down within, because it's there. It's in your cells. It's in your DNA. It's in your DNA. And how do we wake up our DNA? Take your shoes off, walk on the land. Eat some of our, you know, it's like that buffalo. How do you eat a buffalo? You know, it's like one bite at a time. Take a bite of that buffalo, you know. Drink our water. Grab a drum. You may not even know a song. Just strike the drum one time. And let the vibrations. Vibrations are all around you, everywhere. You know, I, found, I heard this definition of trauma is like, it's trauma is not actually what happened to you, but what happened, what, what is happening inside of you as a result of what happened to you. And so to, to physically move, you know, get up and, and read, you know, and, and, and be a warrior for yourself for that healing. Be a wellness warrior for yourself. Find that love. Read books, read those, you know, those, those healing books, read those, you know, stories there's so many things out there and to, to give yourself a chance and if you falter and if you fall and you tears and you feel you fail your failure it's, it's it's okay you know what then get up you know it's okay to feel it we all do then get up say okay <sighs> take a breath move forward take a breath and move forward and I just want to say each and every one of you that you you know what you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Here we are, man. They tried to get rid of us, us genocide us, exterminate us, you know, eliminate us. But we're still here, and we're going to continue to be here. You're here. You are a dream, and believe in that dream. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you, Jean. 
Whew, I'm just soaking this in as well. Theta, how about your words of wisdom? We know that healing is the answer to trauma. What suggestions can you give for those starting or nurturing their healing journey? You know, a, a really good place to start. And you know, I was just as Jean was talking is, um, you know, I, I always talk about my 61st first cousin, 64 first cousins. And then so there's 18,000 of us and there's just more because we, we just enrolled a bunch more. And we have 20,000 descendants on this side. We have 7,900 Sixikai. We have um, 13,000 Kainai. We have 3,500 Batipikani. Well, how we begin the healing is to listen to the stories from grandma and grandpa. Listen to the stories about great grandma and grandpa. Listen to the stories of our parents. And if they aren't alive, the stories that people know about their, our parents. And when we reconstruct those stories, 80% of those stories are just remarkable, miracle survivors and thrivers. And then there's the stories that are um, of trauma. But the way that you get through trauma is that you have to hear the stories and feel the feelings. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's why we're all just having a vulnerable day. It's okay to rest. Rest is resiliency. Rest is resistance. Going fast all the time and being busy, that's bull. You got you got to replenish. If you're busy all the time, your average life expectancy is 55, <laughs> 60. It, it's about re um, enjoying yourself, um, having recess, going to vacation, floating on the water, climbing the mountain. I mean, I just you know, I, one thing I learned from Jean and what Luana is doing right now is. When it's the good weather, I stay barefooted. <laughs> you know, it's it's about and and when you do that genealogy, and I don't, you know, I know we we have to nutshell our answers, Deline. It ripples. Our doing our genealogy, you know, we found 17 live births with one grandma and 13 lived. And all of that, those big families working on the healing. And I can I can see it now in 2021. I can see how just in this small million and a half acres and with our tribe, how we're really embracing each other and allowing each other to um, to live life good. You know, there's uh, so one of the things that we just did, and I think it's it's the healing is every kid, school age kid, five years and older. We decided um, our tribal leaders decided that. When they get their second shot, they get $500. And I was just out. I just saw the prosperity. You got five kids. Just think how much money that is. And I was, I was teasing my sister, Lori. I said, you know what? Everyone bought a vehicle that's going to run good for winter. <laughs> because the family had a meeting. They, I mean, they didn't go out and buy a bunch of video games. They went out and they said, what do we need for winter? And it, But I just saw the pride that, you know, with the resources, now they're going to have, they can um, make it, make it to Great Falls <laughs> and come back, you know, like for, there's, there's, a, um, I don't know, our, our people are, this 18 months of pandemic, Jolene, you know, I think has taught us that we want to live life differently. And I think we want to live it thriving together by helping each other. And so I think that people aren't making like, you know, solo decisions or narcissistic, just, you know, for a little family, they're making them collect. It's like we have collective agreements that our ancestors live by, and we're bringing back those collective collective agreements on how we can help each other and and that's what i see going into the future for the tribes and and indigenous global indigenous people we're helping each other and i i just um so 
I think that's I think part, that part of my answer, you know, and, and I'm just going to show up suit up and show up and do the best the best that I can as a human being. Awesome. Thank you for that, Theda. And Levina had to run. So she's actually with her family at the, the Natural History Museum. So thank you, Levina, <laughs> if you watch, watch later. Um, you know, one of the beautiful things that the Native Wellness Institute does is provide opportunities for healing. Um, so whether it's our, our our trainings that we've been doing online or, you know, coming into communities, uh, we provide opportunities for healing. And to me, that's kind of like, you know, we can pause and think about, hmm, when do I ever experience opportunities for healing, right? Um, so we could just do some deep thinking on that. One of the things we wanted to share, we have lots of tools that helps people connect those dots about, you know, what is healing, right? We, we know that healing from our perspective means to become whole. And we know that means to become whole physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Thank you. Will just brought me breakfast. <laughs> anyway, I'll eat that in a minute. <laughs> anyway, um, to, to become whole, um, you know, to, to feel good. And so I think that's part of our healing journeys too, is like figuring out what does that mean? You know, what does healing mean? And what are some of the challenges to healing? And um, just briefly, um, you know, one of the lasting impacts of colonization is these three unspoken rules that often keep our people from healing. And those three unspoken rules are don't talk, don't trust, don't feel. Don't talk, don't trust, don't feel. And then when we start learning about healing, we learn that, oh, wow, like in order to heal, I need to talk and I need to trust and I need to feel. So it's, you know, it's having these opportunities to break through those unspoken rules, right? So even just doing some deep thinking around that, right? Don't talk, don't trust, don't feel. Because lots and lots of us were raised with those unspoken rules, right? So I just wanted to say that, um, we have five minutes left. And one of the things that we wanted to do today for all of our listeners that are tuning in or that, that will watch this later, you know, somewhere in our family lines, you know, we have people that have went to residential or boarding schools. Some of us, some of us have, right. Or our parents or grandparents or great grandparents or great, great grandparents, and this day, September 30th, you know, the orange shirt day, you know, the day of, you know, honoring and remembering and recognizing um, the residential and, and, and boarding school experience, we just want to honor us, honor you in, in, in a good way. And I've asked Jean just to sing an honor song for that. So um as you're sitting there, please just like open your mind and open your heart and send some prayers to yourself or send to send some prayers to those um, in need right now. Uh, but that's that's how we want to end our power hour today. So, Jean. Yeah, um, I'd also. You know, I don't know if you could hear the rain. I'm sitting in my car here in Seattle and on the on the territory of the Coast Salish peoples in the land of the Duwamish people as I'm sitting here and it's raining right now. Um, and as I sing this song too, I just really want to make an acknowledgement for uh, Jolene and Shailene. Uh, they lost their, the matriarch of their family, you know, and, and um, I know that just, it, it created a shift. Mm -hmm. I felt the shift, the universal shift, you know, because their family is our family too, you know, and, and so there's a that universal shift that I've I've felt, and, uh, and so I, I acknowledge your loss, but your gain an ancestor. That's that's there, you know, and, and so um, um, as I sing this song, just think about around you. You know, I'm sitting here in the city of Seattle, and I can't help but think about what the land was like before there were even buildings. When this land was just pure and this just the land was the land. Wherever you're at, just imagine that. Just think about your that imagining right now. 
as I sing this song and then the land of your ancestors and the people and how the people were and the, the trees, the mountains, the waters themselves. And just think about that because that's part of our healing. We could always go and think about that. You know, and whatever you need to do for your healing in yourself, in your joy. And in this time of remembrance. And so just to, you know, whatever comes up for you. So. Oh, 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 oh. Just that, that. Thank you. You could be anywhere. Ceremony is anywhere. I'm sitting in my car here in Seattle. You always, you know, you are sacred. We are sacred. So gonna chish, gonna chish. Uh, awesome, beautiful. Thank you, Jean. And Theta had to zip off to um, another thing that she's doing. And we just want to thank everyone for tuning in today, you know, we want to just remind everyone um, that yes, the pain and the hurt is there, but so is the love and the resiliency, as we've heard, as we've heard today, right? There's always that flip side to everything. Uh, we hope that you have an amazing rest of your day that you do take some time for yourself, drink some water, I'm going to go do that. Thank you, Jean, for, you know, the love and the support, you know, our family is, you know, we're grieving right now and I wanted to come on here today um, to honor my mom and to honor her sisters and her brothers and all of our other family members, my grandparents who went to boarding school and um, just to show up for them, you know, let them know that we're still moving forward in a good way and we're honoring them in a good way. So we love each of every each and every one of you that's tuned in today, please share this with your family members and tune in next week for our next Wellness Wednesday um, Power Hour. We also want to announce that um, October, November, and December, we got a grant from the Indian Collective and we're going to be creating opportunities for healing. And we wanted to announce that today as well. They're going to be uh, free gatherings on zoom because we are still here in a pandemic but a time for all of us to come together in a good way and do intentional healing so we'll have some flyers announcing that um so please please look out for that all right love you everyone take care have love an amazing you. day we'll see you next time <laughs>